Greetings, my astrophotography nutcases, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. In the last video, I showed you my Milky Way post-processing techniques to get a photo that looks like the one on the left and turn it into one that looks like the right. But as cool as this may be, the problem that we ran into was that because these Tufa Towers are very dark and I had to shoot at f2.8 on my lens in order to gather a bunch of light for my Milky Way photo, these Tufas are super out of focus, super grungy, super grody, super gross. So I actually had the foresight in this particular case to shoot another photo of this exact same composition a couple of hours earlier. And if you look up here at my settings, you can see instead of being at ISO 3200, it's at ISO 200. And instead of being at F2.8, it's at F11. And instead of being 30 seconds, it's 82 seconds. And if I zoom in on these Tufa Towers, you can see I've got tons of great crispy detail throughout the entire frame. So the question becomes, how can I take this photo and combine it with this Milky Way photo in order to get a final composite image that has really good detail throughout the entire frame. The main key, the main underline this, circle it, draw heart doodles around it in your dream journal so that you remember it. The key points to making a good Milky Way composite are that you need to match the color between photos and the tonality and the exposure between photos. In other words, the closer that the color matches and the light and the dark areas match between the two photos, the better your composite is gonna look. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques how you can match the light and the color between your two photos in order to get that killer Milky Way composite. I find it helpful to start off each photo from its basics. So I made a virtual copy here, so I have the basic, the raw file. What I want to do is I want to match the color and tone between these two photos first, then I'll put them together, and then I'll do the final processing on the composite image. If you start to process them individually, it becomes too hard later to do the matching between the color and the tone. So you can see if I flop back and forth between these two photos, the differences that I'm dealing with here. You can see that the Milky Way photo is much greener, the dusk photo is much bluer. Now overall the exposure looks pretty good, especially if I'm looking at my histogram. They have a virtually identical exposure, which is very, very helpful. However, you can see one big difference in the tonality between the photos, which is that this dusk photo has a lot of light down here on the horizon behind the Tufa Towers, and the Milky Way photo does not. And basically what happened was, as time went by, that light on the horizon from the lingering daylight disappeared. So those are the things that I'm going to try to address in this particular part of this series. I'm going to match the color, and I'm going to try to match these tonal differences as best as I possibly can. Now, I don't particularly care for the green tint of this image, so instead of trying to match this, what I'm going to do instead is try to match this nicer, bluer tint of this photo. But in fact, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to warm this up a little bit because I want to bring out some of the warm tones within the Tufa while still having that night sky retain its nice, deep twilight blues. Maybe something in this range right here. Now you see if I compare these two images, there's a huge difference in color. So basically, I'm going to now adjust this photo as best I can so that it closely matches this one. So what do we need to do? First of all, we need to get rid of that green tint. So let's start adding magenta until it roughly matches the amount of blue we've got in this photo. That's looking pretty good, maybe just a little bit more. Something like that. Now you can see it's made the sky super duper blue. So we're going to also warm that up. Okay, and now just looking at the two fuzz, you can see that the coloration between the two photos is lining up pretty well. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you guys a surefire trick so that you know exactly how to adjust each of these images because toggling back and forth between them like this is far from an exact science. So here in your library view, what you want to do is highlight both of those photos, right click, 
edit in Photoshop, but open them as smart objects. Now I need to stack them up on top of each other. And in this particular case, I'm going to put my Tufa layer with the high quality Tufas on top of my Milky Way layer. And the reason for that will become clear in the next part of the video. At this point, what I want to do is add a completely new layer and I want to fill it with 50% gray. And this layer is going to help me determine the color and tonal differences between these two photos. If I change the blending mode from normal to luminosity, what that does is it gets rid of all of the light and dark information in both of the images and it only shows the color information. So now if I turn on and off the Tufa layer, you can see that with the Tufa layer suggest selected, there's quite a lot of blue here in the sky and very neutral tones throughout the Tufa. And if I turn this off, you'll see that many of those neutral tones stay here in the Tufa, but the sky becomes a whole lot less blue. So if I really want to match this photo accurately, what I need to do is add some blue to the sky in my Milky Way photo. And the easiest way to do that is just double click the smart object icon right here. That is going to let me bring this back into Adobe Camera Raw and I can start to make some adjustments. So here in ACR one thing I can do to add a little bit of blue to the sky is simply cool down the image a little bit. Now I don't want to do it too much because I don't want to change the color temperature of those two fuzz, but a couple hundred K difference is going to be okay. The other thing I can do, I can pop over to my HSL and grayscale panel and I can slide some of these other tones in the image like the aquas towards blue and uh, leave the blues alone and slide the purples towards blue. So that's just going to increase the amount of blue within the photo and I can also then increase the saturation of the blues and of the aquas in the image, something like that. And if I click OK, let's see the difference that we got. This was after that change and this was before that change. You can see we added quite a lot of blue to the sky without affecting the tufas a whole lot. And if I turn back on my color sampler layer, you can see that the blues in the sky between the two layers as I click them on and off are much closer to each other. Great. So we've matched up the colors pretty well. Now what about the tones throughout the image? So in this case, instead of using this on luminosity, I'm going to use it on color. What that does is it gets rid of all the color information and it just lets the luminosity shine through. So if I, now if I click on and off the image, you can see exactly where I'm going to have luminosity differences. Obviously, that horizon is going to be much brighter in the Tufa image than in the Milky Way image. Up here, the sky is darker in the Tufa image than in the Milky Way image. Then there are some minor differences down here throughout the two foot, but I'm not going to worry about those because they don't touch the sky. And really all I'm worried about is where the two foot and the sky touch each other. That's the most important area to match up. So what I'm going to do is because this area down here is brighter and this area up here is a little bit darker, is I'm going to pop back into ACR with my smart object and I'm going to grab a graduated adjustment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that up kind of like this and I'm just trying to brighten that horizon up with respect to the rest of the photo. Now in this case it's okay if the Tufa gets brighter as well because that eventually is going to disappear once I make the composite. There we go, so that horizon is getting much brighter. Now, you remember I also had a bit of problem with the sky being a little bit darker up here in this one than in the other one. So what I can do is simply grab another graduated adjustment that has a slight darkening effect like this. And click OK. Now what we should see as I turn this on and off is that this is before the change. You can see I made the sky darker here and the sky brighter down there. What that's going to do is it just helps match the tonality a lot more closely. In fact, the sky here still could be brighter in this Milky Way shot, but up here it looks just about perfect. 
So let me brighten it up just a tiny bit more down there. We'll add another one. Just the exposure and shadows increase just like this. There we go. And now our sky is definitely matching up a lot more closely between these two photos. So now if I turn this layer back off, what we're going to see is that the color and tonality match more closely in terms of the sky across these two images, which when we go to make our blend is going to make things a lot cleaner. Now I realize this looks really funky at this point, but trust in the madness to the method. And in the next part of the video, I'll show you how you can tackle making a selection to mask out the foreground of this photo so that the sh sky shines through onto this Tufa image. And we'll have the beginnings of our composite. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And until next time, have fun and happy shooting.